roll them. Me, what's up, Doc? What's cooking? What's up, Doc? Oh, you're looking for bugs, bunny bunting. Duck is gonna hunting just to get a rabbit skin, but now the rabbit's gonna get. What's up, Doc? What's cooking? Hey, look out! Stop! You're gonna hurt someone with that old shotgun. Hey, what's up, Doc? We really mean it. Hello, friends. Are you ready? What's for dinner? <laughs> I'm hungry. Yum, 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 Delicious. yum, Delicious. Let's go, everybody. Yay! Yay! Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Zoe's Blind Kitchen Corner. So I'm excited because today is barbecue day. Am I going to barbecue? No, I'm not. I, I think I could. Actually, I know I could but I'm not going to. Um, one, because we're using a charcoal barbecue. We're not using a gas barbecue. Um, we like the charcoal taste better. If we were doing it on the gas barbecue, I could, I, I could do it, but I'm married. I have a husband, he can barbecue. So I can do it today. So this is a Greek barbecue. Why is this a Greek barbecue? Well. We're going to barbecue pork sausages with leeks. These are homemade pork sausages that have leeks in them. They're absolutely delicious. You can get them at any Greek but butcher shop. Uh, even some of the Greek markets have them. And we're also barbecuing chicken souvlaki, which is... Uh, we actually bought these from our butcher shop and they're already marinated and ready and they're already on skewers, um, so they're ready to go. So that's the first part why it's Greek. The second part, why is it Greek? Well, uh, I think just like a lot of Americans and Canadians, I'm going to serve mashed potatoes, rice, uh, corn, and a nice green salad which my mom is actually cutting up right now. And of course, tzatziki. We can't have uh, meat and a barbecue without tzatziki. Um, yeah, so I have quite a few things to show you. I don't think I should, oh, actually before we get to the recipe, I just wanna say that if you're sighted or visually impaired, you may see something different about me today. Yes, I'm wearing glasses, so, Without getting into a long story, I've had a cornea transplant and these glasses were given to me to help me maybe see a little bit of contrast. Are they helping? Well, a touch. Not very much, but you know, you never know in the future. Anyhow, uh, the other thing, you can get a hold of me at Zoe's Blind Kitchen Corner at gmail.com. So any questions you have, you can email me there. Of course, you can email Victor's um, email, which is whoseblindlifeisitanyway at gmail.com. When it comes to my email, no apostrophe. So Zoe's, Z-O-E-S, blindkitchencorner at gmail.com. And of course, this will be in the description box as well. I actually just got this email up and running, but by the time this episode airs, uh, you guys will be able to, you will already have seen the email in the description box. So let's get to our recipe because we have quite a bit. We have a lot of gadgets, a lot of pots out, a lot of ingredients. It's not as hard as it looks. Actually, in probably about an hour and 20 minutes, this will all be done. And if my husband wasn't taping me right now, he would have already started the barbecue. So by the time I'm done all of this, he would be done the barbecue as well. So, but in this case, because he's taping me, uh, he's gonna start the barbecue just a little bit later. Anyways, okay. So the first thing I just wanna get out of the way is our potatoes. Because our potatoes need to boil for, I boil them for an hour. 
So, I just want to show you guys. I have a stainless steel pot on my scale. Now, the reason I'm... You guys know I love my non-stick pots. But with the mashed potatoes, I'm actually going to mash them in the pot. And I'm going to mix up the butter and everything that we need right in the pot. If I was using a non-stick pot, I would damage my pot. So for the mashed potatoes, you need one stick of salted butter, salt and pepper to taste. You guys know by now that I use sea salt. So salt and pepper to taste. Approximately half a cup of skim milk, skim milk, pardon me. And uh, again, these things are also to taste. And you need, I'm using 1500 grams of russet potatoes. So what I'm gonna show you guys, so I've turned on my scale and I have, to save time, I've already, uh, we've peeled the potatoes, cleaned them, they're already chopped. But what I wanna show, and I have them in water. Normally, I would just chop them straight into the pot, but I'm going to show you guys. So I'm just going to quickly dump these in. Now, we love mashed potatoes, and we're feeding five people, so 1,500 is good. It's a good amount. We'll have leftovers. Um which is fine because we'll have leftover barbecue too, so we'll be able to eat tomorrow. Now, I didn't, I chopped up all the potatoes, but I didn't chop one, just because I want to show you guys. And I'm almost done putting them in. So, if I was chopping them right now, she would be telling me the amount, which is the same thing. I'm just dropping them into, I'm dropping them into the stainless steel pot. Whoops. I just splattered water, that's okay. Okay, whoops. Okay. I have one big potato in my hands. Um, okay, I actually measured these potatoes out before and it was 1,560 grams. She's telling me 1,520 now, a little bit of water could be adding to the weight, but it doesn't matter. So I take the potato into my hands and I'm gonna slice horizontally. This is a long potato. I'm just slicing horizontally right through the potato. So now it's two pieces. I'm gonna take this long piece and I'm gonna, just like maybe you were doing uh, potatoes in the oven. So I would just, one, two. Ah, I, sli I sliced it up into four, I four parts and the other half. One, two, three, Four, that's good enough. So I've got, so she's telling me 699, uh, 1,699. However, like I said, water could be adding to the weight. So I'm going to take this off my scale. We're going to need the scale again. Uh, I'll show you guys later, but right now I need to get the potatoes going. So I'm just going to add water to my pot. And remember, you guys are going to use tap water. I use water from a spring. So I'm just going to cover the potatoes with water. Now, how do I know? Well, now I'm going to stop. And I'm going to check. And I want a little bit more. Mm, that's pretty good. Okay, now, I'm just going to put these on my back burner, which is my large burner, one of my large burners, and I'm going to turn the heat up to high. Okay, so, our mashed potatoes, yeah, sorry, 
cameraman husband noticed that I turned on the wrong knob, which is great. <laughs> I would have figured it out eventually, but you know, this is what, uh, this is what husbands are for. Uh, okay, so we've got our potatoes going. At this point now, we're going to put the rice on. Oh, I need to set the timer for the potatoes. You don't have to. 43 p.m. You don't have to set it. Um, you could always just test with a fork. And when they feel fall apart, like they're not, you can't lift them up with the fork, they're pretty much done. I usually just set my timer because I know in an hour for sure they're ready because they're cut up into chunks. So I'm just going to set the timer and I'm using my husband's iPhone, so bear with me. Try again. Set timer for one hour. Okay. Your timer is set for one hour. All right. So you just heard Siri. Timer, 59 minutes. And I'm just going to shut her up. So you just heard Siri tell me that she set the timer for one hour. That phone is going to go off ding in an hour and let me know. Now, I keep getting comments about my rice. Husband, is this the right way? Mm -hmm. So... Um, every time I serve rice to guests or at a party, I keep getting comments about, oh my God, your rice is so delicious. What do you do? What's so different about rice, about your rice? I think it's a combination of things. I think it's the rice I use and of course a little bit of technique. So the rice I use is uh, by Lumberg, the Lumberg company, and it's California Jasmine, um... Long grain white organic rice. So maybe not in that order, but on the package, it says organic. It says long, uh, long grain. It says California jasmine white. So this is the first thing and the most important, the rice that you use. So for the rice, you're going to need and I'm going to mention the mashed potato ingredients at the end again when, we, when we're ready to do it. Um, sorry, uh, the mashed potatoes, once this starts boiling, I'm going to turn it down to medium and just let it simmer away for an hour. So the rice, we need two cups rice. We need a quarter cup of olive oil. We need three and a half cups water. A teaspoon of sea salt two pinches of pepper, of course, or to taste. And this can be done with vegetables, and I'm just doing plain rice today. So, I've measured out rice. I'm actually, here's my quarter cup oil. I've measured it out. So, I have my nonstick pot on my stove, on my front burner. So, I'm just going to put the oil. I'm just going to dump the oil into my pot. So I measured it out. I used a quarter cup and I measured it out into a bowl and I'm just shaking it over the pot. So I've got the oil in the pot. Don't turn it on yet. And let's put this aside now. For blind people, we need to wash our rice. I usually get my husband to do it because he's really good at washing rice for some reason. With one hand, so I've measured out two cups rice into a fine mesh strainer. Yeah. My husband uses one hand to shake the rice over the sink while with his other hand he's pouring water. Or of course, you can do it um, uh, under the tap. So if I were to put this under the tap and just run the water, it would be easier for me. But because I'm using spring water to wash my rice, I'm just going to call my mom to give me some. I could do it on my own, but it'll be quicker with my mom. So, Mama, Hi. Ella. Μάμι, μπορείς να το κρατήσεις εδώ που θα πλένω το ρύζι. Για να το. Αυτό. Να βλέπεις το φώτι που να δείχνεις αυτό. Yes. So we're explaining to my mom in Greek 
Actually, my husband decided that he wants to show you guys mm. how he does it. So he's going to do it while I'm explaining. And my mom is videotaping. <coughs> so with one hand, he's shaking the rice in the mesh strainer. And with the other hand, he's pouring the jug of water. Until he sees no milky water coming out from underneath. The water has to run clear. As a blind person, I would set my timer and I would wash the rice for at least two minutes, one and a half to two minutes under the um, running water. And I'm sure that would do the trick. And um, I guess you could probably, let me see if I could. Yeah, so you can smell the jasmine rice as you wash it. You can also smell it. Um, so he's just tossing it up in the air. And again, he's adding more water and he's shaking. So you can kind of time this while we're talking. I think it's probably about, I would say about a minute and a half to two minutes of running it, uh, running the water. Now, if you're using a tap, if you're using a tap, you can even use your hands. So with one hand, you can kind of shake the, the strainer. And with your other hand, you can toss the rice. So my husband is, as he's tossing, as he's pouring the water, he's looking underneath to see what, like I said, if the water's running clear. And it's ready. So it took about a minute and a half to two minutes. Say hi. This is my husband. Hi. This is my husband, Fatih, and we've been married for 25 years, and he's going to go back to videotaping. And then he's going to barbecue. So, our rice is washed. I'm just going <coughs> to set it on a bowl to strain a little bit. Get rid of this water. Okay, that's just my mom not knowing what we're doing. Uh, husband camera, oh, I found it, okay. I'm just getting rid of the jug of water. Now, I just wanna say, I just wanna say about the rice that seriously, uh, for the blind and visually impaired people, there's no way for us to see the water. So just time it for about two minutes. Two minutes of constant water and running and tossing the rice. If you don't get all of it out, it's okay. It's it's not a big deal, as I always say. So, I'm go. I have a tea kettle, and I've measured out three and a half cups of water, and it's plugged in. So I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to. I started the tea kettle so the water can boil, and. I'm going to turn on, now remember we have the oil on the pot, right? So I'm gonna turn it on. I turned it on probably around eight or seven. I'm just gonna get my ingredients close to me. And I've got chicken base, salt, and pepper. And I need Stay there, a wooden spoon. Yeah, I'm going to. So my husband is just reminding me, this is called Better Than Bouillon Roasted Organic, Roasted Organic Chicken Base. It's called Better Than Bouillon Roasted Organic Chicken Base. This is very good. It's very, thick, I would call it slimy stuff. So I'm just gonna open that up and have it ready. <clears throat> now our oil, we don't want our oil to overheat and I think I've overheated it, so don't worry about it. I'm just gonna add the rice into the pot and I haven't overheated it because it's not sizzling tremendously. And I'm just pushing out all the rice out of here. Now, my water's boiling. Excuse me. Thank you. 
What did I do with my wooden spoon? Okay. So now, you need to stir this, otherwise it's gonna burn. So with one hand, I hold the pot with my left, and with my right, I'm stirring, and you can hear it sizzling. How do you know when it's ready? By the time your water has boiled, believe me, it'll be ready. Now this is jasmine rice. So, you can smell it. The jasmine smell is gonna become very fragrant. Once you smell, um, smell the, the jasmine smell of the rice, <clears throat> you basically know that you've sizzled enough. If you over sizzle a little bit, okay, it'll make your rice a little darker. That's okay. So I'm just stirring it and folding it and moving it around because you don't want to burn it, right? You're sauteing your rice in fat. Now, some people do it in butter. I don't, I don't hate it, but I prefer the olive oil. And us Greeks have a love for... Um, olive oil but like I said I've gotten so many compliments on my rice that I really wanted to show you guys this now I'm gonna leave it for a second just because I know I can and I'm gonna grab my salt and I'm just gonna scoop scoop out a teaspoon it doesn't have to be level toss it in Give it another stir because we left it for a few minutes. That's my husband telling me that my potatoes are boiling, but it doesn't matter. But we can turn it down. Okay, my husband was nice and turned it down to medium. Now, the chicken base. Scoop your spoon in and grab a big heaping tablespoon you can feel it with your fingers and just whoop, whoops I'm sorry I just threw it in and also banged the camera now I've over I've over sauteed my rice just because of the camera business so I'm just gonna Turn it down. I'm going to grab my water. Now, did you hear it? It splatters, so be careful. Pull yourself away and pour your water in over. And a lot of steam is going to come up. So you may have to pour and stop, pour and stop. And I'm shaking it over. There's nothing left. I'm going to give it a stir. I'm going to add my two pinches of pepper. Husband wants to tell me everything. One or two pinches. One or two. I don't care. He two. doesn't care. Two. He said two. So we'll go with two. I might make it a little spicy. That's okay. That's two and a half. <laughs> so he's being smart. So I'm just stirring it all up. Now, okay, at this point, guys, I need a napkin. Grab a napkin, because I've got chicken base on my fingers. Okay, at this point, our rice is boiling. So what you're going to do is you're going to take it down to simmer. Whoops. My simmer is at three. And you're going to cover the pot. Cover it completely. And you're not gonna touch it for 18 minutes. And I've pressed start and I press the second button, nothing happens, that means my timer's working. So guys, at this point, look, we have nothing to do with the rice until it's finished. I'll show you guys what we do when it's done. Mashed potatoes are boiling. 
this is going. So basically, our two of our sides are almost ready. So now we have our corn. I'm using frozen corn. So I've got, I'm gonna have three burners going at the same time. So I usually make, depending on how many people I'm feeding, I usually make about, sorry, stay there. Yeah, my husband and I are mumbling at each other. You can tell we're married. So here's my scale again. It's okay. That's my husband's smoker cough. I already told you guys I'm a smoker. Unfortunately, we both are, and we need to quit. So because um, I use 500 grams, usually a 500 bag of corn. <coughs> Excuse me. Why do I have a spoon in my hand? I don't remember. Oh, I do remember now. <laughs> See, I'm getting old. Okay. Um, but because I have a couple of half bags, um, I'm just going to measure them out. So I'm just going to turn my scale on. another bag. Now, I don't know if I'm going to make it all. We'll see. Whoops, I just dumped some out. It's a little bit, this pot is a little bit small for this. All right. So a 500, but I put it into a nonstick pot, and we're just going to set that aside. Okay, we no longer need the scale, so I'm just going to put it away. Now, here's what I want you guys to do. Grab a pinch of pepper. Now I put my frozen corn in my pot. Grab a pinch of pepper. Whatever you like, if you want to, do too. That's fine. Grab. I have basil vegan margarine. Use whatever you guys like. This is what I like using. And actually, my friend Kathy, who taught me to make this. Uh, hi, Kathy, again. I'm making one of your recipes. Um... She uses basil. I don't know if she uses the vegan, but she uses basil as well. So it's the basil margarine. So grab this. You don't need to measure. Just grab a regular tablespoon and scoop out. I'm going to use about three heaping, whatever my spoon grabs, three, whoops. Yeah, three heaping tablespoons. You can use four, you can use two. It doesn't matter. Okay, now, we've got that, so we no longer need the margarine. <clears throat> okay, and my special touch, I'm going to add probably about half a teaspoon of salt because your margarine is salty too. So don't overdo it with the salt. So that's it for that. We'll put that aside. Uh, there it is. And I'm going to add, and again, this is to taste, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And I'm just scooping it out of my jar and leveling off with my finger. And I'm dumping it in. And I no longer need the garlic powder, so just give me a second. I'm just putting it away. Okay. Now, whoops. This is a nonstick pot. So remember I told you guys, don't use um, metal utensils. Use 
a wooden spoon, a plastic spoon, whatever you want. So, and just give all this a little bit of a toss. It's a little bit hard because the, the um, corn is frozen. Now, because I needed to measure out my corn, I would have put the margarine first, then the corn, and then the spices, and, I, and that's it. But now I had to put the corn in first because I just didn't have time to measure it out into another bowl. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Just, you've got it all in. I don't even need that. It doesn't matter if you didn't give it too much of a good mix. What I want you guys to do, put this on your burner. Turn the heat on. Turn it up to high and wait for it to sizzle. Once it starts sizzling, we're going to turn it down. Uh, I'm going to turn it down to medium and I'm going to give it a, I'm going to wait about five minutes. I'm going to give it a good stir. Keep it covered. You want your margarine to melt and all the steam and all the, um, thing, it, it, it's going to cook your corn. I mean, corn, frozen corn is cooked anyways. Excuse me. The temperature of the freezer actually it, it's it actually cooks the vegetables but anyways that's a debate that some people have I believe it um, that your vegetables are partially done but anyhow regardless you want to cook this corn up so once this starts sizzling I'm gonna cover it up and take it down now I I just want to run down now that we've got everything on the stove going I just want to run down the ingredients quickly with you guys. So let's start with the rice. Two cups rice, jasmine organic lumber, three and a half cups of water, one heaping tablespoon of organic, better than bouillon organic chicken base, a quarter cup of olive oil, two pinches of pepper, and about a teaspoon of salt. You can even go half a teaspoon because chicken base is also a little salty. So be careful on your salt. And don't forget to wash your rice. Saute it. Saute the rice in the oil. Add the water. Add the spices, the chicken base. Turn it down to simmer. Simmer, sorry. Cover. And cook for 18 minutes. Ten minutes and our timer's telling us we have 10 minutes. Corn, we want three heaping tablespoons of basil vegan margarine, 500 grams of frozen corn, a couple of pinches of pepper, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder or to taste, and you're going to put it on your, now mine is starting to sizzle, so I'm just going to try to remember where I have my lid. Kapaki lid. So I'm going to cover this and I'm still going to leave it on high for a few minutes because I want the butter to start melting. The margarine hasn't melted yet. So I'm going to leave it on high. In about five minutes, I'm going to check it, stir it all up, and I'm going to turn it down to medium. And I'm going to leave it covered on the burner. And, and I'm going to taste it in about 15 minutes after that. So you need about five minutes on high and then 15 minutes on medium. But I will let you know again when it's done. And for the mashed potatoes, we said half a cup of skim milk, one full stick of salted butter, salt and pepper to taste, 1,500 grams of mashed potatoes, and you want your potatoes to boil up for an hour. So at this point, I'm going, because I still have nine minutes left and I don't have anything to show you guys quite yet, I'm going to... Come back in nine minutes when my rice is ready so I can show you guys what you do with the rice. So see you in a few minutes. Actually nine. Bye. Okay guys, so 18 minutes is up. So you're going to take your rice and you're going to put it on a one of these metal coily things. Now, there's a better option than these metal coily things for blind people. And I'm going to show you that. But right now I'm using a metal coily thing. I want you guys to take the metal coily thing, put it against a wall, put a fork next to it so you can find it. You can't touch the coily thing. I mean, you can, but...
But when you want to put your pot down, you're holding it with two hands, you might burn yourself. So I am going to show you guys a better option. You're going to lift your lid up. You're going to take, I have a plastic nonstick fork. It's got three prongs and you're going to start at the edge and you're going to fluff your rice. You're going to, you're tossing towards the middle. So you're starting at the edges, going around the pot and you're tossing towards the middle. And then you go in a little bit more towards the middle and you just keep tossing and tossing and tossing. That's it. Not too much. Okay. And then you're going to take paper towels. I have them ready. I have folded up paper towels. Uh, these are probably about one, two, three, four, five, six, about eight half sheets. And I folded them so it feels like I'm holding one big sheet in my hands, but I, I folded it up so it's a, a layer of four sheets. <coughs> and I'm gonna cover my pot. You can use a kitchen towel for cheaper. I like using the paper towels. And you're just gonna put your lid right on top and you're gonna let this sit until serving time. Before serving, you're gonna remove the paper towels. You're gonna fluff up, sorry about that guys. You're gonna fluff up your rice again and you're gonna have perfect long grain white rice. Now, I just wanna show you guys quickly. I let my, uh, our corn, I let it, I'm taking off the lid, I let it, sizzle on high covered for about five minutes i gave it a stir i turned it down to medium i covered it and it's been probably about 10 15 minutes i would say now this goes according to taste it's all melted up just stay there it's all melted up our margarine has melted our spices it's all mixed up so at this point i'm just gonna actually try it might be 20 minutes Ouch, I just broke myself. <laughs> so for those who are excited, I just tried to taste. I thought I blew enough. And I just did a 360 because I actually burnt myself. Tastes pretty good, but I want it to um, boil up a little bit more. And I'm just going to turn it down a little bit more. Just because I don't want it to burn. So I... Now it's on medium low. I'm going to cover it up again and just let it um, simmer on the heat. At this point, guys, I'm still waiting for my potatoes. I'm still waiting for the one hour mark. I could test them for doneness, but I'm not going to. One hour, it's safe. The right. I just want to remind you guys. So, an hour, 20 minutes, husband is out barbecuing. At this point, I would go and I would cut up my salad. So by the time the husband would be done the barbecue, Corn is done, rice is done, mashed potatoes are done, salad is done. I made tzatziki this morning, and this is the time that I would go and cut up my salad. But I had my mom cut it up for me today um, because I wanted to do the. I wanted to show you guys all this. So um, with the corn, just leave it on the heat. P potatoes are boiling, rice is doing its thing. So I'm just gonna come over to my dining room table. This is what we call marula salata. And that actually translates into lettuce salad. So the word for lettuce is maruli, and the word for salad is salata. So it's marulo salata. We change the E to O when you make it a, a one word for lettuce salad. It becomes a one word in Greek. Forget it, I'm not gonna explain Greek to you guys. In Greece, they, most people, it's fresh green onions, romaine lettuce, dill, finely, finely chopped dill. Um, not like Caesar salad. You finely slice up your lettuce. I don't mean paper thin, but finely slice it. Same with the onions. Finely chopped uh, dill. Mix it all up. Add in about one eighth cup of olive oil. Half about juice of half a lemon, salt and pepper to taste. Mix it all up together, taste it. 
If you want more lemon juice, sometimes it even sometimes we even use juice of one lemon. I sometimes add cucumbers in because I like it. Um, my mom doesn't add the dill because she doesn't like it. And even though my husband loves Greek salad and he does love cucumber, he doesn't prefer it in this particular salad. I do. So my husband likes it and same with my mom. They like it just the lettuce and the onions. So we've got, like I said, finely chopped onions, lettuce. We're gonna add in, it's not serving time. So I haven't added in the oil yet. I'm gonna add in oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper, toss it all up and then we're ready to go. We've got our Greek salad. I hope you guys can all say it. Ma, let's do it again. Ma ru lo sa la ta. Now put that all together. Ma ru lo salata. That's our um, salad. I'm just gonna cover it up. Like I said, rice is going. Mashed potatoes, or sorry, mashed potatoes are going. Rice is ready. Corn is almost ready. And husband is gonna barbecue. So I'll see you guys in a little bit to finish off our sides for our barbecue today. Um, yeah, that's it. I will show you guys the mashed potatoes and we're ready to chow down. So see you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, we're back. So it's been an hour. Uh, our corn is ready, rice is ready, salad is ready. And I'm gonna lift up the lid. Please be careful. I'm gonna put it aside so I don't burn myself. And I'm, I have a fork in my hands. I feel for my pot, I found the side and I'm gonna try to pinch or stab my potatoes with the fork and I can't lift any up I, I feel that I'm piercing them with the fork but I can't they're not coming up so our potatoes are ready um, so we don't need the fork now I have I showed you guys for the rice to put it on your sil that those silver coily things Forget what they're called, but anyways. But the best thing you can do is invest in silicone mats. Silicone mats, I got these from Amazon. I think I got two for 15 Canadian dollars. You can find them for $10. You can find some at kitchen stores for $5. This is a very nice, thick silicone mat. Um, they're a little better quality. And like I said, they're not too expensive. You can get two for $15 Canadian. So US, I'm not sure, maybe about $10 US. Um, and these are very good because it makes any surface, uh, what does it make it? <laughs> you can put these on cookie sheets instead of parchment paper and it makes it non-stick. But the other thing it does is it's going to protect my counter. So I'm just gonna put the silicone mat on my counter and I just have an elastic band in my hand because I had it rolled up, so I'm just putting that aside. I'm going to turn off my burner first, okay? I have my strainer in my sink. I'm going to grab my part carefully from the handles. These handles don't burn. And I'm gonna move slowly over to my sink and I found the sink, I'm tapping it, and I have my, uh, again, I have my strainer against the wall of the sink, and I'm going to tip my potatoes right into my strainer. Whoops. Now, I felt the strainer move or something, so I'm just checking it. Okay, it's fine. And tip right over. Now, all the water's out of my pot. If there's a potato in your pot, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna set this very hot pot on the silicone mat. And I'm gonna lift up my strainer with the potatoes. Be careful, it's hot. You might get some steam in your face. Just shake it a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, and I'm gonna take it over and dump the potatoes back into the pot. Now, if for some reason, I'm just gonna feel the strainer yeah, got all the potatoes out. If for some reason you feel like you, all the water came out. Now, if you felt a little bit of dripping, it's okay. Just like right now, they're very hot. So, I have a full stick, a full stick of salted butter. And I'm just opening it up. And it's been sitting on my counter for the last hour. So, it's a little soft because it's hot in here. 
It's a spring day. It's actually a long weekend for us. In Canada, it's Victoria Day today. And I'm just opening it up. Some people slice it up. I don't. I don't. I mean, sometimes I do. But right now, I'm not going to. I'm just going to toss the whole thing in. So I'm holding it over my potatoes. And I just let it drop the whole thing right into the potatoes. And I have a heavy duty masher. This one isn't the round ones with the holes. It's, it feels like lines are going horizontally up and down. So squiggly lines. It starts at one end and if you follow it with your finger, it just goes, you know, to the left. Sorry about that guys, we had a little accident. Camera went off, so I put my butter I showed you guys that I put my butter into the potatoes and I was showing you the masher. It's got, I don't know, vertical lines if you're holding it a certain way or horizontal if you're holding it another way, but it's got lines that go back and forth, squiggly lines. Now, because I had to check on the video because it went off, my butter, I put it into the pot and it's already, I don't know, almost melted, but it doesn't matter. You can put your butter in cold, you can put it at room temperature, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna take my heavy duty potato masher and I'm just gonna start mashing the potatoes you just put it in the pot and press down press down move around the pot and press down now the potato builds up so you're gonna lift your potato masher tap it against the edge and again press down and you're just gonna keep pressing keep pressing and mashing and you're moving around the pot around the edges in the middle and again Lift, tap, so all the potato can fall off the potato masher. And just keep doing this until you don't feel any large chunks. And again, tap down. And the more it becomes mashed, the more will stay on the masher as you press down. So I'm just pressing and pressing and pressing. And it's building on my masher. I can actually feel that the masher is getting heavier and the camera I'm sure is showing you. So I'm just going to tap and let it fall off. It may, might not all fall off. It doesn't matter. So I'm doing this. Now, at this point, I'm going to add in a couple of pinches of pepper. One and two. Just sprinkle it in. You can add one. You can add three, whatever your heart's desire. I'm going to add in about, now I'm using salted butter, so I'm going to add in about half a teaspoon of sea salt. And we'll keep that on the side because we may need it again. Okay, and I'm going to start mashing again with the salt and the pepper now. And it's getting nice and mashy. Now, is it as mashed as I would like? I don't know yet. I'm just mashing away. And what I'm going to do now is I've got about half a cup of skim milk in my hands. Make your mashed potatoes with skim milk, not whole milk. If you put whole milk, it's going to taste really, you're going to taste the milk too much. If you put skim milk in, it's going to give it the right taste and it's going to make it a little fluffy. I'm not going to put the whole half cup. I'm just going to tilt and let half of this mixture drop in. Now, maybe I dropped a little less than half. Maybe I dropped a little more and I'm just going to continue mashing. And you don't want too much milk, but you definitely need milk. If you're not a fan of milk, then mashed potatoes is not for you. However, the way I make it with this amount of butter, really, it's a wonderful, whoops, it's a wonderful, sorry, I just licked my finger out of habit. I apologize. Um, it's a nice buttery mashed potato. Now, at this point, guys, I need to try it. So I've got clean spoons here. 
because I need the taste for salt and pepper. So I'm just going to grab a little bit. And this way, at this point, I can also feel how smooth I have it. So. I took one taste. I'm not sure. I'm going to taste again. Okay. So. For my liking, I think it needs just a touch more salt. So at this point now, I'm not going to add in with a spoon. I'm going to add in with a couple of pinches. So one pinch, two pinches. That's good enough for salt. And again, that's a, a, a preference, uh, sorry, taste preference. Now, I'm going to give it one more mash. This is my final mash, and I'm going to tell you why. Now, the more you make mashed potatoes, the more you're going to know by texture. I already can feel that this needs more milk because it's still quite stiff. Even though it's smooth, smooth, it's not floppy. It's, it feels heavy. And also, mashed potatoes, as they cool, they drink up the milk. So if you think you've added enough milk and you leave it on your counter for half an hour until it's serving time and you go to serve it and it feels hard, it feels, it doesn't feel fluffy, that means it needs more milk. Even at that point, add milk. You can add it in later. So I no longer need the mashed potato, or sorry, the masher. So I'm just throwing off whatever's on the masher with my fingers. Remember, we're blind. We can't do this with a spoon. We won't know. So I'm just throwing it off. Okay, good enough. And now I have a wire whisk in my hands. I'm going to empty out more milk. I still haven't used my whole half cup. And I'm going to start whisking this. So you put your whisk in and stir 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 now this is going to get caught in the whisk so again top so it can come out you might even have to help it with your finger like i'm doing right now i'm just pushing it off my whisk okay and again try to stir it all up try to get that new amount of milk so the potato absorbs that new amount of milk and again i can tell it needs more i don't even have to taste it at this point I'm just pushing off with my finger because it gets caught in your whisk. So, I added in my full half cup of milk now and I'm gonna start stirring. Now it's getting easier with the milk to stir. You should be able to stir, I wouldn't say with ease, but it shouldn't be difficult either. So I'm just stirring it all up. And I'm going around the edges, right? Because I want it all to mix up now. I'm just gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna scrape the edges and bring it all to the middle. And I have to turn the pot, just scraping the edges. Doesn't matter if you get it all. And you might even get some on, your, on the rim of the pot. You'll clean it up later. Okay. Now at this point I need to try Again, so I'm just gonna try to grab a little bit. Oh, and I've got some on my finger. Okay, let's try. It needs a little bit more milk. Sometimes it depends on your potato. Sometimes your potato might suck up the half and it might be enough. Sometimes it might need a more. It might need a little bit more. So I just have a carton of milk, skim milk in my hands, and I'm not even gonna measure this. I'm just gonna let a little bit drop in. But I need to listen to how much I'm dropping. So I'm gonna be quiet for a second. Okay. So I hope you heard that. It's probably maybe 
a couple of tablespoons, two, three tablespoons I might have added, and I'm stirring it up, and now it's stirring up nice and easy. See, now I'm whisking it, and it's stirring up nice and easy. So basically, guys, I'm pretty sure our mashed potatoes are done. Now, if you don't like lumpy mashed potatoes, I don't mind a few lumps. Some people want it really smooth. You can mash this again. You can now use your potato masher and mash it again. But regardless, you need to whisk this. And the more I whisk, the easier it, see now I'm, my arm is going, sorry, it's easier. So I'm just gonna give it a final taste. Where's another clean spoon? Final taste. Delicious. Now, like I said, by the time our barbecue is ready, this might need a little bit more milk. And I will know that because when I come to serve, it might not be fluffy. That means my potato soaked up too much milk. You can at that point, if you don't want any more milk, you can add a little bit more butter or you can add milk. And I'm just gonna take a spoon and I'm just sort of making it a little more presentable. I'm just pushing it off the sides and I'm just spreading it. You don't have to be perfect. I'm just spreading it and we <clears throat> making it a little bit even in the pot, going around the edges with my the back of my spoon. That's good enough. We, we don't need this to be perfect. It's gonna go in our tummies. It's gonna be, we're gonna scoop it onto our plates. That's good enough. I'm going to partially cover this. If I remember where I put my lid, my lid should be, there we go. Don't cover this completely. You don't want it to go bad. You don't want the milk to go bad. I'm leaving an opening quite, uh, my two fingers can fit into my opening. So I just covered it a little bit so it, we don't get a crust on top and uh, it stays warm. And we're gonna check it before serving. If before serving it needs a little bit of milk, I'm gonna add it, take my whisk, whisk it up, or add a little bit of butter. If I can taste the milk too much, I will add more butter. If I can't taste the milk, I'll add a little bit more milk. So this is really a preference thing. The way to make the best mashed potatoes and the nice and smoothest is what I showed you. Mash them, whisk them, full stick of butter, salt and pepper to taste, at least half a cup of skim milk. And you'll see uh, to your liking. Now, at this point, I'm not gonna say goodbye, um, only for the fact that my husband is actually gonna stop videotaping and he's gonna go out and he's gonna barbecue our I believe they're pork sausages. Regardless, if you go to a Greek book butcher... It is, it is a pork sausages. Okay, so it, it, my husband's confirming that it's pork. If you go to the, a Greek butcher and say, I want your sausages, your homemade sausages with leeks in them, then they will give you the right ones. And of course, the marinated uh, ready, ready on skewers, wooden skewers, chicken souvlaki. So he's going to go out and barbecue this, and I'm actually going to try to maybe show you guys a little bit of him uh, cooking up the meat. And when the meat is done, we're gonna put it in a big roasting pan, add lemon juice, and I'm gonna show you the final serve uh, plate, all served up with all our sides and our barbecued meats. So, see you in a bit, so you guys can watch my, my beautiful husband barbecuing. See you guys in about, I don't know, half an hour. Hi guys, so I've turned on the camera and I actually don't know what I'm shooting. I'm in my kitchen and I'm going to go out to the patio, so I'm going to open up my kitchen door. And yeah, so you can hear my voiceover speaking. And I'm just going to go down the steps. I'm going to hold on and go down the steps. Till right. I don't know why she's telling me tilt right. right. Maybe I should turn voiceover off. No, it's okay. It's okay. So, Go this is it. my patio. Not sure if I'm... Anyways. And this is me. How do you know I'm pointing at you? Hi, guys. 
How do you know I'm pointing at I know, you? I can see the phone. Oh yeah? Yeah. Okay. And this is our barbecue. It's not really a barbecue. Maybe my husband can take the camera now and show you. So tilt it, tilt it like that. There. Okay. So this is not your normal looking barbecue. This is what we use on Easter to cook our entire lamb. It has a spit with a motor at the top, which is not on there right now. And we actually put a whole entire lamb on there and it turns for hours, like six or seven hours during Easter. And we cook a whole entire lamb. But of course we can use this as a barbecue. I can't use this. I can't cook on this barbecue because we're using real charcoal. And of course I can't see. So I can use a gas barbecue, but we prefer the charcoal taste. Now, <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know if you guys can see my shish kebab. Yeah. It's showing my shish kebab? Yes. So, we've got chicken souvlaki, because we don't call them shish kebab. We call them souvlaki. We got chicken souvlaki on the barbecue. Let's blame the butcher. So, <laughs> I told you guys that I'm going to be doing um, pork homemade pork sausages with leeks and chicken souvlaki. I guess my butcher was having a bad day because we opened up the packages and instead of him giving me 10 pork sausages and 10 chicken souvlaki, he gave me 20 chicken souvlaki. So I guess he was having a bad day. That's okay. We're going to barbecue our pork sausages another time. For now, we're going to do chicken souvlaki. So this is my husband uh, doing them on the barbecue. I guess they'll take about a half an hour to be ready. And once they're ready, I'll show you guys the final product. We're going to put them in a big roasting pan when they're done. And I've squeezed lemons. And it doesn't matter how much. Four lemons, five lemons, whatever you want for this amount. I did about four lemons right now. And we're going to pour the lemon juice on the souvlaki while they're hot. And then we're going to serve them up with everything else we made today. So I will show you guys the final product. And uh, since I have you guys here, let me show you my... Um, Before you show them anything, yes. let me say something to them. Yes. When you barbecue, whatever you barbecue... You make sure you have the, the fire, even if it's a gas barbecue, low, low fire. <coughs> and all the time, just turn it. So just in case you guys didn't get that, my husband is saying that uh, he wants you to cook your meat, at least souvlaki, on low... No, no, whatever they cook. Medium? Yeah, medium, medium to low. Medium to low heat, constantly turning... We're not going to baste, but if we were doing pork chops, we would constantly be basting with um, a mix of olive oil with uh, lemon juice. But I'll show you guys that another time with the pork chops and stuff like that. Um, before, so that's it for the barbecue right now. I, my husband's going to help me when he can, but I'm going to show you guys. We built last year, we're going to do a vegetable garden this year. And we ended up building in our garden an area with um, patio stones and two raised or half raised, <coughs> excuse me, let's call them flower beds. And it's got a chicken wire mesh enclosure. And we're going, that way the animals, raccoons and squirrels won't be able to get into our garden and eat our vegetables. So tomorrow I'm actually going to be planting vegetables. So I'm going to try to walk over and show you guys. <coughs> Now, I usually know my backyard, and um, it takes me a while to get there. Left. Level. 
And sorry about my voiceover being oh. on. I should have turned it off, but I didn't. So I have a, a door and, whoops, let me find, find the handle. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I've opened the door and I step in and as you can see, it's um, like a raised bed. We filled it with soil and there's patio stones in between. And then there's another right. raised bed. And I'm going to do, are they here, Fati? They're here, right? No. Yeah, they're here. Yeah. So we've got, I hope you guys can see them. Um, I bought this weekend tomato plants, cucumbers, eggplant, peppers, onions, uh, zucchini, romaine lettuce. So a whole bunch of things that I'm going to plant tomorrow. And in, I hope I was able to point the camera and I hope you guys were able to see them. I'm going to plant them tomorrow. And in a later, at a later date, I'm going to show you guys when they start growing and so on and so forth. And I'm just going to close my door. And it's, my husband has to uh, fix it a little bit. Um, yeah. And uh, that's it. That's my garden. And that's my husband barbecuing. And I've done the sides. So I'll see you guys in a little while to show you the final product. Again, this episode okay. went over. And I'm sorry about that. But I hope you guys enjoyed my company. And you guys got to meet my husband, whose name is Foti. And we'll see you guys in a little while. Zero portrait. Stop recording. Video. Okay, guys, finally to the end of this episode, our Greek barbecue, Greek Canadian barbecue. It's Victoria Day. So here's our plate. It's ready. We've got our mashed potatoes, our corn, our rice. We've got the tzatziki. And in the middle, I've got uh, red peppers. So what these are is you buy roasted red peppers in a jar, chop them up, drain, drain them out of the jar, chop them up in a bowl, finely slice or dice garlic as fine or as thick as you would like, add garlic, olive oil, and vinegar. And this is all to taste. So you add a little bit of oil, add a little bit of vinegar, taste it up. So this is our, and you can keep it in the fridge. It doesn't go bad. Um, they will last a few months. So I've got the red peppers in the middle. I've got the salad in a bowl. And here's our, we have them in a roasting pan to keep warm, our chicken souvlaki. So I'm just going to add, oops. And they're, we've drenched them in lemon juice. And I'm going to add a chicken souvlaki to my plate. Whoops. And there we go. We have our plate ready to go, our salad ready to go, and we're all ready to eat. And I don't think I have anything else to tell you guys, um, except that under, like I said, one hour and 20 minutes, You've got all your sides ready while your better half is cooking up your meat, whatever the meat may be. And you've got your rice, corn, potatoes, even red peppers, salad. Everything is ready in about an hour and 20 minutes. So a wonderful meal. You can have some garlic bread on the side, which I didn't do today, but sometimes I do do. And you can do that on the barbecue, and I'll show you that another time. If you have any questions, please email me. Of course, you can comment below. Or email me at Zoe's Blind Kitchen Corner. Zoe's is without an apostrophe. Z-O-E-S Blind Kitchen Corner at gmail.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm sorry that this episode was longer, but I wanted to show you guys the barbecue. I wanted to show you guys the garden. And I know I keep saying I'll try to keep these episodes 
uh, shorter, but I overdid it again, and it's just because I love your company. It's my fault too. And I'm a new cameraman. New cameraman, so it's his fault too. So there you go. But we love you. I love you, Foti. I love you too. Yeah. And I'm hungry. <laughs> there you go. Maybe you recognize that voice from our introduction. So we're all hungry. We're going to go have our meal. And again, I love you guys. A blind kiss to you. A blind kiss to you. And a blind kiss definitely to you guys. See you in our next episode. Bye. I am your host, Zoe Fiogos. With sincere love and gratitude, I thank you for watching Zoe's Blind Kitchen Corner.